Hi, my name is Venkatesh Chulapur and I am working as a senior software engineer at Methworks. In this video, I will be covering the Simulink modeling and deployment of a DC-DC buck converter on a STM32 processor using the embedded coder support package for STMicroelectronics STM32 processors including the STM32 CubeMX configuration workflow. The video links as shown will guide the user on how to quickly install and set up a hardware support package for STM32 processors needed to run the current example. The model is deployed onto a Discovery Digital Power Starter Kit by ST Microelectronics. The kit is based on STM32 G474 microcontroller. The kit contains a synchronous buck converter power stage. Using voltage mode control, we achieve regulating an output voltage for any changes in load in the plant. The controller and plant mapping with respect to the discovery kit can be seen. The power stage containing the switching MOSFETs, output filter inductor and output filter capacitor are referred to as the plant. The controller which is designed to compensate for this control loop is running on the STM32 G474 microcontroller. Under voltage mode control, the output voltage is measured and compared with the desired set point or reference. The difference between the actual output voltage and the desired output voltage is used as an input to the controller and the output of the controller determines the new value of the duty cycle to close the control loop. The current implementation of the digital control involves STM32 MCO to operate a closed loop voltage mode buck converter using the onboard peripherals like ADC and high resolution timer. As shown, the ADC startoff conversion is triggered by high resolution timer compare resistor event. The trigger causes the ADC to sample the output voltage and complete the conversion. The ADC end of conversion triggers an interrupt which is serviced by the main core that executes the voltage mode controller. The PWM switching frequency is 200 kHz and the ADC sampling including duty cycle correction by the controller is done at the same rate that is every 5 microsecond. The corrected duty is then updated into another high resolution timer compare resistor which comes into effect on the subsequent PWM cycle. Having understood the overall design, let's get into the implementation part. There are two Simlink model files to begin with. That is a target model file and a host model file. The target model file named STM32G474DCDC bug runs on the STM32 MCU and implements the voltage mode controller. It also streams the current output voltage back to the host model. The host model named STM32DCDC bug host model runs on the host machine and does signal logging of the output voltage as sent by the target model. As noted before, for clock and peripheral configuration, we are using the STM32 CubeMX tool. Let's launch this tool and understand the configuration in more detail. To launch the STM32 CubeMX tool, go to the hardware settings and under target hardware resources, click on launch. You should now be able to see the STM32 CubeMX configuration for the buck converter example. On the high resolution timer, we are using the timer C outputs to drive the synchronous buck converter stage. The outputs are configured in complementary deadband mode. Period resistor is configured to enable a PWM switching frequency of 200 kHz. Compare 1 resistor contains the compare value for duty cycle control. Compare 3 resistor contains the compare value for triggering the ADC start of conversion. Configure the deadband values for the rising and falling edge. The output 1 configuration set and reset source enable the on-off switching activity for the PWM output thereby generating the duty cycle as defined by the compare 1 resistor. The output 2 configuration section is left unchanged as this output is driven by the dead time configuration. Under ADC triggers configuration, timer C compare resistor 3 match event is configured to trigger the ADC. For ADC configuration, channel 4 is used to sense the output voltage. Notice the resolution and data alignment settings including the external trigger source. Enable the global interrupt for the ADC. Finally, enable the USART 3 for the serial communication between the host target model and configure the baud rate. Key peripherals used in the example include ADC, high resolution timer and USART. The driver blocks for the same can be found under library browser, embedded coder support package for STM microelectronics STM32 processors, G4 boards. We then model the application using these blocks. Now let's understand the Simlink model in detail. This is the hardware interrupt block that executes an ISR on behalf of the end of conversion interrupt from ADC. We then read the ADC output voltage and then compare that with the set point voltage or the reference voltage and the error is fed to the PI controller which calculates the correction value for the duty cycle. The duty cycle correction value is then programmed into the compare resistors of the timer C module of the high resolution timer. 
The ISR executes at the PWM switching frequency of 200 kHz. We also send the output voltage of the buck converter back to the host model here. We can also enable disable the embedded loads on the discovery gate and understand the impact of the same on the output voltage regulation. Now let's deploy this model to the target and view results. In order to do so, click on build deploy and start and this should do the code generation for the model and deploy the same to the target. Before getting into the data logging part, please note in the two model approach. Although the voltage mode controller ISR runs at every 5 microsecond, we are still able to perform the data logging at up to 50 kHz speeds, that is every 20 microsecond, a new data value is sent from the target model to the host model. After the target model is successfully deployed, open the host model and double click on the scope, hit the run button and stop. You should be able to see that the output voltage is now being regulated at the set point voltage of 3.3 volts. The onboard joystick can be used to partially or fully enable the embedded loads on the discovery kit. This will enable the user to analyze the impact of the load variation on the output voltage regulation. Based on the configured external interrupts, the loads can be enabled or disabled. As an example, when the embedded loads are fully enabled, the output voltage would momentarily dip and the controller is able to recover this load change and successfully regulate the voltage at the set point voltage of 1.6 volts. This concludes the video. Thanks for your time.